Today we're going to learn about snapping in Lightburn, um, what it is and what it's for. So if you haven't seen snapping behavior before, uh, it's fairly simple to demonstrate. I'm going to use my pen tool here to create a line. And as I drag the end of the line close to an existing shape, you'll see two things happen. Uh, one, my cursor changes, and two, the line snaps to the other shape. And so you can use the snapping behaviors to line up things in Lightburn and to make sure that things are attached to other things. Um, so as I'm dragging this line, you'll see that the cursor changes to a plus to tell me that I've hit a node or a corner. Um, the cursor changes to a line with a small circle in the middle to tell me that I've hit the center of an edge. Um, now this works over here as well as up here. Um, or you'll see a line with a small slash through it to tell me that it is attaching to another line. Um, or an X with a circle in the middle to tell me that I'm at the middle of another shape. So this is very useful when you are trying to create things freehand. Um, so I can create this line, drag it, snap it to that corner, um, create another line, and when I'm starting this second line, my cursor has changed to a snap cursor, so I know that when I place the beginning of this other line, it's snapped perfectly to that one, um, and so on. So I can, again, drag more lines, wait for the snap to happen, and attach it to existing shapes. Um, this also works when you are in selection mode, so I'm going to remove these two. Um, if I create a copy of this square, put it over here, if I wanted to drag this square so that it was perfectly touching this one, um, there are a number of tools in Lightburn to do this, such as the alignment tools up here, but you can also do it quite directly by just grabbing the edge when you see the cursor change to an edge snap, drag it over to the other shape, and they will snap together edge to edge. Uh, you can also do this with points, so I can select this corner point here, and when the cursor changes to the snap cursor for the corner, uh, I can tell that I'm going to be dragging from this corner. And then as I get close to the existing corner on the other shape and the cursor changes to the snap cursor again, now they are snapped together. Um, that will work for center points. So if I grab the center drag here, I can snap to the center of this. Um, I can snap to the center of this uh, and so on. Center snapping also happens when you grab from the middle. Um, if I drag from the center handle here, it's automatically snapped to the middle. And then if I drag over another shape and you'll see the cursor change to the X with the hole in it, that means I'm snapping to the center of that other shape. And so these two per shapes are perfectly centered over each other now. Um, this is useful for things like offset editing. If I create a small piece of text like this, um, select it and do an offset, change the color of the offset. So let's say that I was planning on cutting this out as a keychain. If I move this out of the way to make it simpler for me to weed the unwanted bits out of the middle, um, I lose the registration that I had between these two shapes. So this shape and this shape are, are no longer aligned um, and I want to get that back. So if I grab the center drag handle here and drag it over the original, when the cursor changes to the X shape, I can tell that they are aligned again. And so when I let go, now these are perfectly aligned. Uh, back the way I wanted them to be. This behavior also works in node editing mode. Um, so as an example, if I just create a random shape, um, the nodes in node edit mode uh, will also snap to other shapes like this. Uh, they'll snap to each other. So if I um, insert a new node here in this one, um, I can snap it to that one, I can snap it over here, and so on. And this also works for control handles as well. So these handles will snap to other things uh, in the same way that nodes will snap to each other. Um, the snapping behaviors are also useful for creating things like rulers. So Lightburn does not have guide rulers. However, there's nothing to prevent you from making your own. So if I use the line tool, uh, I'm going to hold shift to make this line perfectly vertical. You can also make it 45. Um, so I've made this vertical line. This line is on a layer that is set not to output, so that's why it's faded. Um, but it means that it won't get sent to the laser, so it's not part of my design. However, um, it is useful for alignment. So if I want to make sure that multiple shapes are lined up along the same edge, I can do so by grabbing the shape 
on a line like this and dragging it until I get that snap cursor on this other line. And so I've effectively created my own guideline um, and I can use it to make sure that these two shapes are perfectly in line with each other um, as well as with other shapes anywhere that I wanted to. Um, so it's very useful for creating your own guides, rulers, uh, things like that. And um, that's kind of what it's intended for. Um, but it also just helps general creation. So hopefully you find it as useful as I do. Thanks for watching.